Um, a couple things that I want to ask just of you. Yeah. I don't want to catch you off guard. Yeah, but no. I know there are a bunch of, um, of uh, you know, I guess high school age, maybe there's some college age folks as well in the State House today. And can you um, just give me a sense as to, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself for the record, sure. but um, as to kind of what your organization is, I think it's called Youth Climate. Uh, the Youth Lobby. Lobby. Yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, who it's composed of, you know, what you guys do, guys and girls do. And, um, I, you know, I know a little bit about it because I've had conversations with some folks mm -hmm. and I've got some constituents who, who participate as well, um, including my son. Uh, but, I, you know, again, I'd be interested in a little background for committee members understanding. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll introduce myself. Yeah. I'm Seth Fisher Olvera. I'm a senior in high school at Vermont Common School. So, which is where? In South Burlington. Yep. Okay. I live in I live in St. George, yep. um, part time in Burlington, part time. So, yeah, uh, the youth lobby is a network of schools, basically, <coughs> and then it, through the schools, um, a network of clubs relating to climate, climate justice, outdoor clubs, and it's a kind of a coalition of <coughs> all of those clubs, all of those people. Uh, who care and are passionate about climate action, who care about our climate, who want to take action to help save our climate. And so we plan, a lot of, we plan events to come to the State House, to lobby legislators. Um, we have events out on the lawn to celebrate the climate, to bring people together, to talk about this, to make sure that our legislators, legislature understands how the youth feel, um, and kind of express the youth voice. And do you do work uh, locally as well? For example, um, you know, do you work with, I don't know, with the South Burlington, um, uh, you know, town council, or I'm not sure what the, what the um, energy committee. Uh, yeah. Conservation um, committee. I, I, for example, I know that um, I have a local high school, Thetford Academy, and um, there are a handful of students there that work pretty closely with our select board, mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at some of these issues. And uh, it's, it's been interesting as they kind of dig in at the kind of grassroots level. It's, you know, how does government work? But yeah. Do, do, do you, um, do, do, does the climate uh, lobby work with um, local or is it mostly focused on state? I think it's generally focused on the state level. Yeah. I think that, like you said, individual school clubs are still definitely able to engage on a local level and I think that's an awesome piece of the youth lobby is it's a coalition of um, of groups and not just kind of one mass so mm -hmm. when we're together I think we focus on state issues but when we go back to our separate schools I think we still have the ability to kind of take have an impact on a local level as well yeah. Great. so the uh, I'm sorry Scott, yeah. well I was just ask quickly is there, yeah. you have a list of who's you know who your who your group is, who's in it, what schools. Yeah, are, well, um, kind of. I mean, it's a long list um, in terms of like the events that we've put on, and who kind of affiliates with us. I mean, we had more than 170 college, high school, middle school, and homeschooled oh, kids okay. come. So we have the attendees there, but it's a long list. And the school, I mean, the schools across the state, far south is Burn Burton. Um, Maybe I'll be specific. Do you have any, anybody in St. Johnsbury? Um, St. <laughs> Jay. Um, off the top of my head, I have no idea. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Okay. But yeah, I think. I'd be interested to find out. If yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. And I think a big part of the youth lobby is um, we take climate justice into account big time. And so having representation across the state, rural areas, urban areas, minority. Um, populations um, and having as ver as diverse of a group as we can to I feel like make sure we're getting all the perspectives we can uh, that's really important if you go to use lobby.org it's all there oh thank you okay so the floor is yours Seth I, I didn't want to cut awesome. you off but I, I wanted the committee to know um, kind of a little bit about your yeah um, well first of all I just want to thank you guys um, passing the, uh, getting the GWSA through committee. Um, that's awesome. I know that means a lot to me personally, um, and I know the youth lobby is really supportive and appreciative of that. Um, in terms of what we're doing in the State House today, um, Valentine's Day, and we're here to celebrate uh, the climate, the earth, and our appreciation for that. And so I think we have a couple testimonies and committees planned. We have this love letter written. 
Uh, and so I, we, we plan to share that with some committees, and then we have a press conference um, at one, and then some meetings uh, individually. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, is this specifically for our committee, or is, or is, is this, this the same letter? That this is the letter that we're going to be sharing okay, um, collectively. I'm a little hurt that the Valentine isn't, isn't as personalized as for well, the Entertain <laughs> Technology Committee. You know what? Well, I'll share the love with the Appropriations <laughs> Committee. Uh, resource. Very kind, very benevolent of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I can read this love letter really quick, if that yeah, sounds yeah, good. Sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Dear Earth, we have come to the State House to express our deepest affection for your climate and to declare our commitment to reducing harmful levels of atmospheric pollution, which threaten life as we know it. We are forever grateful for the beautiful home you've created, the clean water, green forests, luminous stars, and the deep snow that brings us joy. However, I worry that your treasures are being robbed. The rampant use of fossil fuels has begun to fundamentally disrupt the bounty of life that your inhabitants take for granted. The earth is warming, the stars have begun to dim, and one in four species are at risk of extinction. We are already watching people struggle from the consequences of climate change. Our cries for you too often fall on deaf ears, on minds unwilling to take action, unwilling to change despite the clear and indisputable science. To us, climate change is not a political issue, it's an existential threat, the effects of which we have only begun to feel. We're proud to come from a state that chose to keep the promises that were made at the Paris Climate Accords. However, we are ashamed that with all of our goals, we are not reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Vermont carbon emissions have risen by, has, have risen by 16%, while climate pollution in all of our neighboring states have fallen. It is imperative that we act as soon to prior, prioritize combating climate change and making the switch to clean energy, <coughs> infrastructure, and protection of the livelihood of Vermonters. The consequences of climate change continue to reveal themselves. We point to Australia and their burning continent Venice and their constant flooding, and the many Pacific Islanders whose homes are disappearing beneath their feet. We point to the fact that in 2008, a Cornell study written by leading climate, climate scientists found that if we wish to live on a planet that can sustain human life, we must limit carbon in our atmosphere to at least 350 parts per million. Unfortunately, that was 12 years ago, and the problem has only gotten worse, with CO2 levels now over 415 parts per million. With, with many distractions, it is easy to forget the radiant, winter-filled future we strive for. It is easy to get caught up in the trench dug by those who profit off our destruction. However, for those of us who still storm the breach, run towards the fight, we will not stop, we will not forget. Forget the clean water, the green forest, the luminous stars, or the deep snow. Love always the Vermont Youth Lobby. Right so, here. yeah. Very nice. um, Hi. Yeah. Well done. This is Sydney and Evelyn, Hi. also Youth Lobby <laughs> members. <laughs> um, did you want to join us as well, or we? Uh, we're, we're here to support staff. Okay. <laughs> very kind of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got the very end. Seth had given us an, an introduction to um, kind of what the Vermont uh, Youth Lobby is about and, and why you guys are here today. So, um, and, and you're welcome to um, add anything that you'd like. If, uh, Thank you. So, no Perfect. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for having us. Yeah. We'll be in the State House yeah, good. for a little bit longer. Do so. you have a question? Yeah. Well, uh, I just wanted to make a comment that we, we see the Global Warming Solutions Act as a foundation. Absolutely. But we know we need to do more than just say we're going to, to make these requirements. We have to actually take some actions that are going to be able to get us there as well. So we're going to continue working on that. I think you're exactly correct. I appreciate you saying that. Yep. <coughs> Um, so one of the, the ch I have a little bit. <laughs> uh, one of the, the challenges for us is is that we, we first of all whatever we do is glacially slow. That's just the legislative <laughs> process. Yeah, glacially may be a bad term. Yeah, <laughs> bad analogy in this case. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but the, you know, but, and we all can hope for the the silver bullet of technology that's going to fix this. But so much of it is, um, is human behavior, expectations, and our, our own actions. And those are really hard to change, especially as adults. And so it's, it seems to me that the best, the best forum for changing human behavior is in schools. And it's really good to see that's driving that area where it's 
where we can't reach easily. Yep. I think you're definitely right. I think like what you're talking about with this silver bullet that we're waiting for, um, I think that's how a lot of us youth lobby members feel is we can't wait for this silver bullet. And though we really, we believe market forces have a definite impact on how we can move forward in terms of climate technology, well-crafted policies um, are really important. And then education at a youth level is definitely a step we wanna take. And I think some of us are testifying at the, the education committee. Um, so yeah, I definitely. So you just said that far more articulately than I did. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just wanted to say, as you follow, uh, spend time in, in the legislature and follow uh, what we're doing or not doing, um, uh, and I've said this in, in many different ways in constituent meetings in my area and things like that too, it's important to realize uh, that while there are certain uh, important big pieces of legislation like the Global, uh, Global Warming Act we, we, that just came out of our committee. Um, uh, I see it, it's important to actually understand that uh, at this point almost every different committee in this building owns some piece of, of this issue and is going to be doing things uh, uh, sometimes small measures and things like that, but I think, uh, you know, year after year, starting, I started seeing it last year where I became aware, even though I'm a member of the committee that has energy uh, in its title, um, I didn't even know what some of the other committees were doing because we all sit in our little rooms and it's, it's, it's hard uh, to, uh, to know. Uh, uh, let's say about um, uh, carbon sequestration and forestry as, as, as one example. Um, so it's important to, uh, to, um, to, f to follow what, what is happening ac across the whole legislature in the, in the transportation committees. They are going to be dealing with issues around um, how to make uh, electric vehicles um, uh, uh, how to change the, the market um, uh, so that electric vehicles uh, become more and more of a, a, a real possibility for more and more people. And that involves incredibly uh, way more complicated issues than I originally thought about uh, charging and who pays and how electric vehicles help contribute to road maintenance and, and all of these things that I, I went into it thinking, well, that's easy. It's not. It's it's not. So these committees are 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 uh, figuring those things out, and 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 I think year by year, uh, making progress on that. So it just it's important to to not just look to the big bills, but to to see whether everybody or almost everybody in in the building in both the House and Senate are are um, uh, incrementally doing things as well. It's yeah. Something I'll I'll add on with. Um, Representative uh, Pat's comment, um, when we were first elected the, the same year in 2015 and served on the health care committee, um, something the health care committee is working on now, and I actually um, was a sponsor of the bill three years ago, um, relates to telemedicine. And uh, it's a really important issue that you wouldn't think about with regard to climate change, but it's important for rural areas. It's important actually from the work that this committee's done on access to broadband internet service. Um, but also the ability of um, people who don't live close to medical care, being able to access medical care literally on their iPhone or on their computer. And, uh, you know, in that regard, one of the ways the health care committee looked at this was you don't have to get in your car to go to the doctor. Or you can see a specialist uh, if you live in a remote part of Vermont um, if you have access to broadband internet service. Mm -hmm. and. Um, but again, just to, to your point, Avram, uh, you know, there are a bunch of small things that add up to meaningful uh, change uh, in terms of either having to get into a car or if you live in a rural area, having access to something that five years ago you didn't have access to. And uh, so it, it is interesting that different, I think different committees do have a piece of Seth, I'd just like to talk for a minute from a, an adult's perspective. Um, I can't think of anyone, any adult, um, that uh, doesn't care about the environment they live in, especially the folks in the rural area, like myself. I live in it every day. 
whether it's where my septic system goes, where my water comes from. Um, but I think the other thing that the group has to understand for sure is um, when you're an adult and you have children and other commitments, whether it's property taxes, whether it's a son or daughter that you have to commit to an institution for one reason or another, whether you need to keep a job to pay for all this sort of stuff. I think it's really important that the economy stays viable because if, if folks aren't comfortable with their living situation, the last thing they're going to care about is the environment when they're talking about life and death situations. So again, I think, you know, I can understand the youth perspective, but again, the criticism sometimes that I see with adults saying that we haven't done enough or we're not doing enough, when, you know, I honestly believe that there's a lot more to it than that. Um, I, I think it's, uh, it's just something that I believe the, uh, the youth lobby should be aware of more as far as uh, what, what a lot of uh, uh, folks are, are trying to do and, and have to do to, to make a goal of it. Yeah, and let me just say, I, I think that youth lobby as a whole, definitely, it's not just climate action, it's climate justice, and we don't really believe that climate action should happen if it's not equitable for everybody. So if there's climate action, but it disproportionately benefits people who live in urban areas, who don't need long-term, like who are more, who have more access to public transportation, we don't think those things should happen because if climate action isn't bringing everybody with it, then we don't, it's just not feasible for a world to live and we don't wanna create a sustainable world and only half the people get to live in that world. So I think you're absolutely right when we talk about how do we make it economically viable and I think when I was answering your previous question, market forces are important. Making this an economically viable option for families is going to dramatically improve our carbon emissions, is going to improve how we as a state have responded to climate change. And so absolutely market forces are, are definitely important, but I think the core belief is that well-crafted policies can help move the market towards a sustainable future. and. We believe that well-crafted policies can help Vermonters who are struggling, who want to have an EV car, who want to be using solar to accomplish that goal so they can remain economically healthy while also assisting the environment. Because, you know, I really believe that in terms of money, it's obviously an issue you know, I live, in a fa I live in a family where we don't have, you know, a ton of income. I'm going to college next year. I just got to college yesterday. And hey, um, <laughs> thank you. And, um, and so money is really on our mind. But I, I think I, I just I wouldn't want to say that because people have issues with money that they don't care about the environment, because on an internal level, I know when I'm speaking for my family. The money's not always there, but I think the environment is always on our minds, and I think it's hard for it not to be. I don't, I don't want to cut you off. Uh, Scott? Yeah, yeah so just, I, I think certainly uh, making, it a, making it an economic uh, development issue is, 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 is part of it, but I think the biggest issue is the culture change, and um, sort of following up on what Robin started talking about, um, getting people to, uh, to prioritize issues around sustainability and, and, and dealing dealing with climate change. Um, not only in terms of greenhouse gas reduction, but in terms of planning for resilience and adaptation and you know how we're gonna cope with, with climate change. Um, that cultural change is, is 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 I think the biggest issue and also the most amorphous and the most difficult to, to, to uh, sort of quantify or deal with. But um, what what you all are doing is 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 really important that way. Um, so, uh, talking with your peers um, and talking with your parents and your parents' friends, th that is, is as important as talking to all of us. Um, because, you know, the legislature will do what people demand us to do, mm -hmm. and ultimately. And um, so, 
That's, yeah. I just want to make that point as well. I think you're absolutely right. I yeah. think that's part of why one of our goals is to be a constant presence in the state house, is to be a constant presence in schools and to be yeah. in as many schools as we can yeah. and to be, you know, in all the places we can be because I think you're right. The culture, the mindset is really important because yeah. when people are in the right mindset, then they are calling their legislators and yeah. they are looking into options for sustainable yeah. um, energy use. So. So th th think of how quickly uh, the culture changed around gay marriage, for example, mm -hmm. or, or uh, legalization of marijuana, or I don't know, just smoking. Okay. Smoking is another excellent, another excellent example. Culture changes really fast when it gets to a, a tipping point. And I, we might be at getting to the tipping point, but you know, it's really critical that you, that you are aware of that, in, again, among your peers and among your, your parents and your parents' friends. Yep. Scott said pretty much what I want to say, but I want to also add that you guys are a force. <clears throat> and I think that uh, the action that the youth lobby and, and um, all the events that were sponsored last year and everything really made a difference. And uh, I appreciate that. And uh, I think that you are going to continue to be one of the driving forces in uh, whatever we can do to, to uh, address this problem. Thank you. So that's what I would also say is, um, you know, and I think, you know, I, I really appreciate uh, Representative Higley's comments. Um, I, the town that I live in is, is fairly rural, not quite as rural as, as Lowell, but, but pretty rural. And it's interesting to me to see where, uh, again, we have a high school that's been very involved in these issues, um, but economically where people have started to move. And it's kind of a neighbor to neighbor thing. You know, we've had, local groups, some of them youth oriented, but some of them very much adult driven that have been interested in, you know, renewable technologies. And, you know, there's been huge questions around affordability for those things. Is that something I can participate in? Um, you know, related to transportation issues. And, uh, you know, we're not a mass transit town, but there's a lot of people in my town who actually work about 30 miles away at, you know, the medical center in, in Hanover. Um, but you know, people thinking about these things from a, from an economic perspective has actually been really helpful. I don't think the tipping point in my town has been around, you know, I hate to say it, around as much saving the planet. It's been about, I get a few more bucks in my pocket because I'm generating my own electricity or uh, we've got a bus now that goes from my town to Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center with, you know, 20 people around. And it's things like that where people are starting to save money. Those market forces, I think, are really important in changing 50-year-old minds. Um, you know, and I think as Representative Higley said, you know, if you're 16 years old, maybe those things aren't quite as front of mind. But I will say that from some of my constituents, um, you know, when they look at kind of planet-saving measures and environmental measures that work kind of in concert with economic measures, those are really powerful forces. And uh, that's not at all to, to, um, to undermine the, the fundamental message here, because mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important. But when those things get married uh, uh, on Valentine's Day, those are the, uh, <laughs> I think those are the things that really push culture change. And again, in my town, we've started to see it. And some of it has been driven by youth action, and some of it has been driven by market forces, and those things have worked well together. Yeah, so. absolutely. I don't think, you know, the, the fish in the ocean don't care <laughs> about why you decided to go solar, why you decided to keep their oceans from acidifying. But as long as it's happening, I think they're okay with it. And I know we're short on time, so I, I'll just, the last thing I want to say is, Going back to Representative, what Representative Pat said in terms of just kind of how it sometimes feels slow, and especially like I don't need to tell you, you know better than I do how you know how the process in legislature works and how sometimes it feels like it's step by step. And I can assure you that though we're not in the legislature, I think a lot of the youth feel the same way. Is it feels like a slog? It feels tough a lot of the time, and that's kind of what the last piece of the letter was about. Is I think we believe truly that this fight will be won. It can be won. That's why we're here in the State House. We wouldn't be here if we didn't believe that we were going to facilitate change. We wouldn't be here if we didn't believe that the change we believe we can facilitate <laughs> is actually going to be impactful for a lot of people and for the planet. And so um, we appreciate your continued work um, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Great. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much. All right. Well done.